All right, joining us now from uh, Duke, head coach Carol Lawson, along with uh, student athletes Reagan Richardson and Kennedy Brown. Uh, coach, we'll begin with your opening statement. Wasn't our night tonight. Uh, thought UConn did a great job of executing uh, defensively what they wanted to do, and um, you know we struggled to score the ball all night. I thought defensively we, you know, played well enough to win. Um, that's a, obviously a high-powered offense. Um, it just we we were out of sorts and out of rhythm on the offensive end, and. Uh, you know, just weren't able to until late. You know, get enough get enough points on the board. Um, but as I told our team after the game, I'm just really proud of them. Proud of the season we've had, and um, you know, all the all the growth we've had. It's been amazing um, to coach this group, and just really lucky um, to be able to to be with them every day. It's been a joy, and um, you know, just fortunate to be at Duke and um, get the chance to coach coach our, our whole team, but especially these two that are sitting up here with me. We're going to open it up to uh, questions from the student athletes. Start in the back. Uh, Avid Kumar with Texas Athletics. First of all, sorry about the loss. I know it's a really tough one, but um, you know, with a loss like this, I just wanted to get just kind of your mindset at this moment. You know, how long are you going to take to just kind of reset at this moment before you come back and, you know, start working for next year again? Just talk about your mindset right now and how you're feeling. Yeah, it's uh, not a great feeling to lose like this, you know, but I'm super proud of this team. Uh, it was our all, like, first time being in the Sweet 16, so I feel like – we're all just proud of ourselves. I feel like going into next year, um, I'm super pumped, super confident. Um, I'm just ready to get into the gym as soon as I can. Like, if it's probably not tomorrow, but like maybe the next cut, like a week or so. Yeah. Uh, Tim Booth from the AP. For both of you, what did you feel like UConn was doing at the defensive end that were, was causing you guys the amount of trouble it seemed to you you were having in the first half? Um, yeah, I feel like <clears throat> UConn did a great job of disrupting us. Um, we did have a lot of turnovers, which is something that we've been trying to work on the whole season. Um, I mean, at the end of the day, UConn executed their game plan very well, and they came out with the win. Lindsay. Lindsay Schnell, USA Today. Um, Kennedy, I have a two-parter for you. Do, you. do you have a COVID year, technically? Do you know? I was told I do not. Okay. So you end your college career in the same state you started it in. I know it's weird, but there were probably a lot of Kennedy Brown fans in the stands today. Just what was it like to play here at the end? Yeah, um, I mean, we played here last year in a Thanksgiving tournament, and so I got to see you know some familiar faces then and again this year. So um, it's nice to see those people and reconnect um, for sure. Um, Honestly, I, w I wasn't thinking about that too much. Really just was focused on our team and where I'm at now um, and, you know, um, trying to leave it all out on the floor. Uh, Martin Heinzelman, Duke Chronicle. Sort of um, for both of you guys, what's it meant to you guys uh, to watch sort of your, your young teammates, sort of how they've grown and evolved all throughout this year? What's that meant to you all? I know, I think – Seeing our young, our younger uh, team uh, just develop over the course of the season has been really, has been really awesome. I know for me, uh, we get to come again next year and try to get back to the same stage that we are here and hopefully go farther. Um, I know the beginning of the season was a little iffy at first, but seeing them grow so much, uh, it's just been awesome to see, and I'm super excited for next season. Yeah, um, I mean, it's been amazing to watch the growth. Um, that these freshmen and everyone really um, throughout this whole season, I couldn't be more proud of them and just the composure they've showed, um, having to kind of step up as a freshman and play a really big role for this team. So I'm really excited for them um, moving forward and excited to watch them um, and really just thankful that I was able to be a part of this year. In front. 
um, Bella Munson with the next um, for both of you. I know obviously not the result you wanted, but how do you feel about your defense and the energy that you put on the court throughout the game that did seem to frustrate UConn at times? I know I'm super proud of us. I feel like our game plan from the beginning was to disrupt and uh, make things hard for them. And I think towards the end of the game, we fought back as hard as we can. And I feel like our defense showed. Yeah, I mean, that's something we've prided ourselves on all season. Um, it's, you know, not going to change in this program. Um, it's a staple for us. And so being able to, you know, make things tough and kind of, like Reagan said, disrupt a little bit of their normal flow was really the goal. Hi, Garrett Spooner with the Duke Chronicle for both of you guys. Um, you guys were down as much as 20 during this game, fought back in the last five minutes, cut to within five. What was the team's mindset there with those last five minutes, just keep pushing and ended up cutting it to almost a one-possession deficit? Yeah, I feel like our mindset was to just keep fighting. Um, everything was on the line. We had to put everything, like, all we had on the line. So our mindset was just to keep fighting and to keep pushing. Yeah, I think that's kind of been our mindset all season is just to compete um, until, you know, there's no time on the clock. And so we still had time um, to make a run, make a push. And so that was really, really the mindset going into, you know, that last quarter was to just try and cut it um, as close as we could. Back here. Uh, this, this question is for Kennedy. Um, you've had an incredible career, so a career to be you know, extremely proud of. I know that, like at this moment, you're probably not, you know, thinking about that. You're probably thinking about like how could we have done better. But looking back on your incredible career, what it is, what are some of the moments that you cherish the most, and some things that you're gonna, you know, hold on for the rest of your life? Because, you know, you got you got your sister. You know, they're gonna be there for you for the rest of your life, right? You know, it doesn't it doesn't end here, right? And so I was just curious, you know, what you're gonna cherish the most, what you're gonna miss the most, and what's next for you. Yeah, um, <laughs> definitely had a lot of ups and downs throughout my career. Um, I'm really thankful to have ended it here at Duke um, with amazing people by my side. I couldn't have chosen better people, honestly. Um, and so these last two years have been really special for me. Um, and I'm, I'll miss the people the most, honestly. Um, getting to come in every day and work to get better and to teach and learn. Um, has been really special for me this year. I think especially this group is um, a really special group and I'm excited for them in the future um, to watch them grow and I'll continue to be their number one fans, you know. Um, we'll definitely come back and visit and cheer them on, you know, 100%. Um, so yeah, it's the people for me and the people make the place. And so I think that's really my, my career has been um, made special because of the people. Other questions for our student athletes? Thank you both very much for your time. Appreciate it. And congratulations on a great season. All right, the floor is open uh, to, for questions to Coach. Start over here. Uh, Martin Heiselman, Duke Chronicle. Uh, Coach, uh, you know, you guys sort of had a tough time scoring, especially down low in that first half. What do you think made it so tough to sort of get inside and get those sort of high percentage shots that you guys like to take? I think it was, it was just crowded in there, uh, you know, the, the whole night. Uh, so when we, we did get touches in the paint, uh, there was multiple players in there. Uh, they did a great job of, of bringing, you know, multiple players when we got catches. And, um, you know, it, it flustered us um, at, at different times. And, and then our inability to finish down there, um, I thought, hurt us. When we did get touches, uh, we, we missed a lot of layups. And a uh, little bit uncharacteristic for us, but um, you know the rhythm we never really got uh, going until late. Uh, so I would just say that it was just crowded in there uh, was was probably the biggest difference. Um, Bella Munson, with the next, you obviously mentioned that UConn 
uh, executed their game plan really well. Was there any sort of tactical adjustments you wanted to make on the offensive end to try and get more buckets, or, or was it just you know hitting those layups that didn't fall, like you said? Yeah, I think the whole goal of offense is to manufacture quality looks. Um, and obviously, when you're in the middle of the game, uh, you're, you're feeling out what the other team's doing and, and then trying to find a way to do that. Um, so uh, for us, I thought our quality, our shot quality in the second half was a lot better than the first half. I thought we got some open, open shots, not just layups, but open threes as well. Um, and some open pull-ups, and we, we just didn't hit enough of them. I mean, um, you hate to boil it down to something that simple, but we didn't hit a lot of them. And, uh, you know, that's, that's the way it goes sometimes. I think uh, any time you struggle like this on the offensive end like we did, I think both teams deserve their share of the credit. I think they did a great job of making it difficult for us. And I think we did a poor job when we did get opportunities, whether it was converting in transition we had a lot of two-on-ones and three-on-ones that we, we fumbled and we did not finish. And those are points that are valuable that you need to convert on. So um, through the course of the game, uh, just trying to find ways to settle ourselves um, and uh, try to get some quality looks. Um, you know, we had an open pull-up jumper by Reagan and an open layup by Jaden late to cut it to three. And we missed both of them, you know. And, and those, those shots, I'm not pointing that out. Reagan and Jaden were great, you know. But that's kind of the kind of night it was for us. And, and like I said, they had a little something to do with that. Um, you said you were trying to settle your team. Was there anything in particular you told them to try and to settle them? Or was it just kind of letting them grow into the game because they're relatively young? Yeah, I mean, I thought initially I was trying to let them grow into the game because it was the first Sweet 16 for everybody on our roster, and, and we, were, we were scattered to start, okay? We, we did not look like ourselves. Um, the issue was it was everybody. You know, a lot of times normally, like, is there one player or two players, you kind of can pull them out and put someone else in and settle, and it was like all of them. And, and so I, I couldn't sub them all. You know, we need to have five players. That's a rule, I think, out there. So... Uh, that I was trying to, to let them settle, and, and then we dug ourselves a little bit of a hole. But, you know, at the end of the first quarter, I just I always try to just say to them, like, hey, here's where we are. You know, with all that said, at the end of the first quarter, it was 10 to 6. We're down four points. And so, for me, it was just reminding them of where we were in the game, you know, what the deficit was, and let's just try to string some quality possessions together. Lindsay? Uh, Lindsay Schnell, USA Today. Kara, to that point, you know, your program can build off this, and a lot of good things can come from having this experience. Do you have that perspective? Can you have that perspective now, or is it just frustrating because you lost? I, I, I think um, I, I, I always toggle between, like, short term and long term. Um, I think that's probably most coaches in programs because you're, you're looking at what your immediate emotions are and, and, and needs are of the players and then long term of what you're trying to do. Um, I'm, I'm so proud of my group. I mean, uh, we lost seven of our top nine from last year. And... We were the youngest team in the ACC. We played freshmen more minutes than any team in the league. And, um, you know, we're able to, to be competitive and, and win some big games and, and make it to this point. Um, so I have emotions right now, but honestly, they're positive emotions more than, more than negative ones. Um, just the type of year it was, how great a group they were to coach. Um, and, uh, you know, our future is really bright uh, with, with our young players. And, and yeah, they, they will learn from this, will grow from this. Um, we're welcoming in a great freshman class uh, in the fall. And um, I think this experience will, will help motivate them uh, in, in a good way to try and, try and get back to the stage again. Coach, 
Congratulations on Name great, and affiliation, please. Oh, Vivek Kumar with Texas Athletics. Sorry about that. Um, you had a great season, you know. Sorry about the tough loss today. But as you said, you know, you said that you had a lot of positive emotions right now. And you got a phenomenal class coming in. Um, can you just talk about, like, what you're telling, like, your upperclassmen right now? Just to, you know, because this may be the end of this chapter, but it's not the end of your relationship with them, I'm sure. And so I'm just wondering, like, what are you telling them right now? You know, just kind of help them through this, because you know this is this is a chapter, but it's it's not over after this. And helping them understand that what they're doing right now is going to make an impact in the long run as well. And so I was just wondering what you're telling them right now. I mean, I haven't had a ton of time to talk to them yet, um, but uh, Camilla and Kennedy are two seniors that won't be back with us next year. Um, honestly, I just thank them. I thank them for. Uh, picking Duke, you know, to, to come, um, for picking me to be their coach, um, for everything that they've uh, taught our younger players, um, how they've helped lead our team on and off the floor this year. So I'm just really thankful um, that I've had the opportunity to coach both of those young women. Um, they're amazing, and they're going to do amazing things in their, in their lives. And um, so, yeah, that was more of just thanking them and and, um, you know, I have a special relationship with each of them. Um, and, you know, I know they're going to be, like Kennedy said, you know, like she's going to, they're going to be always a presence in my life. And I'm always going to be a presence in their life. And um, hopefully in, their, in between their busy schedules when they graduate, they'll be able to come back to some games or if we go near where they live. Hi, Coach Garrett Spooner, Duke Chronicle. Um, I was wondering, you touched on that you guys were the youngest team in the ACC. Can you talk about specific um, areas of development that you saw bet between your freshmen, Jane and Alucci, this season? Jane and Alucci grew in every area. I mean, um, just from their knowledge, overall basketball knowledge, um, to understanding like schemes and game plans at the college level, understanding scouts. Uh, understanding our playbook and what they're trying, what we're trying to achieve um, in certain plays, and so the growth was was just massive for both of those two players. And um, they're 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 just sponges. They're learning. They they want to be good players, and they're growing each time out. And uh, I'm just proud proud of both of them. Um, you know, we we depended on both of them a lot um, in these in every game, and so to see them continue to grow in their role and take more ownership. Um, you know, I think that bodes well for us next year with our freshman group. They got a lot of experience. I'll throw Delaney in there as well. I thought she had a fantastic year for us. Um, and they're just going to be, they're so much more aware now. You know, when they come in as freshmen, they don't even know what they don't know. And they're so much more aware of why certain things matter um, and, you know, how focused you have to be and disciplined you have to be. And I just look forward to more time with them. I'm thankful I have three more years with them, and um, I love those three. They're, they're fun to coach. All right, we are to the end of our time. Coach, appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. Scheduled for tomorrow, real quick, uh, USC will begin at 9.30 uh, with the head coach, followed by student athletes. UConn at 10.45, followed by student athletes. Uh, tip off at noon. Have a good night, everyone. Ha, ha, ha.